So we're going to start by going over some definitions of fundamental concepts that we're going to be covering throughout this whole textbook in chemistry. One of the first ones is the idea of the atom, which we'll, we will definitely define uh, better later on in this book. Um, it's really a sub-microscopic particle that makes up the fundamental building blocks of matter. So when you look at matter, really what's inside of there is atoms put together in different ways. Beyond atoms, we can combine the atoms together to form molecules, and that's the definition of a molecule, are two or more atoms uh, joined in a specific rearrangement. And we will uh, also be talking quite a bit about how do we join atoms together. So just to give you an idea, oxygen and hydrogen are individual atoms. So when they're written like this, we're just talking about the individual atom or element. And here, when we combine them together, here we have hydrogen and oxygen uh, put together to make water, nitrogen and hyd hydrogen put together to make ammonia. These are molecules because they have more than one atom inside of them. Chemistry itself is uh, its kind of a broad field. It's a little difficult to define, but we'll try. Uh, it's a science that studies the composition, structure, and properties of matter and their transformations. And this is one of the things that I've always loved about chemistry is you really get to understand uh, how the world works. So we talk about matter, any type, crystals, minerals, metals. We understand that. And then more importantly, we understand how uh, to convert one type of structure or composition into another one. And really, that's what we're going to be talking about in this entire book. Before we get into that, we need to talk about how did some of the original concepts of chemistry come about. And this led from scientific observations. And from this, it led, led to the idea of a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is just an assumption or an idea that uh, people put forward in order to be tested. So we say, um, I think that this is what's happening. And the idea, once you get a hypothesis, then you start performing experiments. So that's how you test a hypothesis, is by doing scientific tests. So a hypothesis is just an idea, something uh, that you put forward, and then you provide evidence that that hypothesis is either true or untrue by uh, performing experiments. So an experiment, very fundamental to uh, chemistry, is a procedure designed to generate scientific observations or to test a hypothesis. So in lab, you'll be doing quite a bit of uh, experiments, and that's really what you're going to be doing is generating data. So at the far end of a hypothesis, if the hypothesis has been well tested, so it's gone through many different experiments, and each experiment provides evidence that the hypothesis is true, you begin to come up with a scientific theory. So a, a theory is a very well-tested hypothesis. So a theory is a set of um, um, statements devised to explain the way nature is. So that's really what we do inside of science is try to explain wh why does nature do what it does. And a theory sets out to do that. And it's really only true if it's been repeatedly tested. So we hold the theory um, statement back for something that has actually been um, shown to be true repeatedly. It's not something that we uh, call uh, initially uh, a theory. And more importantly, a theory is really used to make predictions. So if a theory is really sound, you should be able to predict something about the way nature occurred. So uh, you talk about Einstein quite a bit based off of some of his theories. They were able to predict that there would be gravity waves. And, and fairly recently, they were actually able to prove that. So a theory allows you to make um, predictions. And if the, the, the theory is sound, the prediction should be proven to be true. And how you prove it's true is by running experiments. And that's really what the scientific method says. So this is the fundamental idea. Scientific method says that all of these things, scientific laws, hypotheses, and theories, are always subject to continued experimentation. You really can't, uh, or it's very difficult to really truly prove something. All you can do is provide evidence that it is true. And so at any time, some new experiment may prove that there's a flaw inside of uh, some theory or some hypothesis. And if that's true, if there is a flaw, that means you've got to go back to beginning and correct your hypothesis or your theory. And then even if something is proven to be true, you can better explain what's going on. So if you have a, a theory, scientific method says that you continually test that theory. And as you test it or experiment on it, 
you are able to refine that original model, make it better, and um, be able to explain what's going on uh, in a superior way.